In this video, I want to demonstrate the basics of stepper motor control with a Raspberry Pi and show how it can be used to operate a 3D printed mechanical bellows for a ventilator. Controlling a stepper motor using a Raspberry Pi can be quite simple. If you haven't already, you should look at some tutorial videos of the basic functionality of a stepper motor. All we need for this experiment is a stepper motor, a stepper motor driver, four female to male jumper wires, six male to male jumper wires, a DC power supply, and a Raspberry Pi. I purchased a combination stepper motor and micro step driver. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B that I bought as a basic starter kit from Canakit. I used a laboratory power supply, but a simple 12 volt power supply that can supply at least an amp is sufficient. It just needs to have a voltage between the stated voltage limits on the micro step driver and enough current to drive your motor. I also had some wires available from a basic Arduino kit I had on hand. There are four parts of the micro step driver of importance. First, you need to set your dip switches. Note that a dip switch in the down position means that it is on. The information about the dip switch settings is on the front of the micro step driver. The first three dip switches determine the number of input pulses on the pulse plus pin needed to complete one revolution of the motor. For example, off, off, off corresponds to 6400 pulses needed to achieve one revolution of the motor. The second three dip switches set the current rating of the system. My power supply can give up to one amp, so I'm going to set my dip switches to one amp. This means I need to set the switches to on, off, on. The second part of the micro step driver is the power supply. Some micro step drivers allow for AC voltage along with DC voltage, but many use only DC. Tie the negative into the ground and the positive into the DC plus. The third part of the driver is for the coil windings in the stepper motor. Usually the wires from the motor are ordered to be directly inserted into the driver. If that isn't clear, the first and third wires are a coil pair, and the second and fourth wires are a coil pair. There is also a simple check. Twist the motor without touching two wires, then touch two wires. If the motor is harder to turn while the two wires are touching, you have found a coil pair. Insert those two wires in coil connections A plus and A minus, and the other two wires in B plus and B minus in any order. The fourth part of the micro step driver is the signal. Simply tie the pulse minus, direction minus, and enable minus to the ground on the Raspberry Pi. Then you can toggle the direction of the motor by putting either 5 volts or 0 volts on the direction pulse pin. I tied this pin to GPIO 27. Then you can place a series of on-off pulses on the pulse plus pin. This is interpreted by the driver to make a small incremental rotation dependent on the dip switch settings. I connected GPIO 17 pin to the pulse plus pin on the micro step driver. Okay, we're now ready to test the system. So, now let's use the motion control to operate a simple mechanical bellows for a ventilator. I used Blender 2.79, an open source 3D creation suite, to model a system that incorporates the stepper motor. After several iterations, I came up with a simple, low filament, 3D printable design, along with some common materials from around the house to achieve a relatively high torque device that squeezes an ambu bag. Okay, let's move on to the coding. For demonstration purposes, we will do a simple code that operates the lever arm. Note that the following parameters do not correspond to an actual breathing cycle. I wrote the code in the Raspberry Pi Python IDE called Thani, but for simplicity of the video, I'm going to write it in Spider. We are going to use LED in GPIO 0 to activate pins on the Raspberry Pi. We use sleep in time to create time delays in the program. We define the pulse, 
direction, and enable pins by declaring that they will be tied to GPIO 17, 27, and 22 pins. To start, I set the direction pin high, but this is not necessary. Then I set the number of pulse steps to 3000. My dip switches are set for 3200 pulses per revolution, so this corresponds to a little less than one revolution of the motor. We will do 10 repetitions of the motion. We will set the sleep time between the on and off states to be 300 microseconds and the gap time before changing directions to be 0.2 seconds. The time between up and down cycles is set at 3 seconds. I wrote a for loop that will perform the number of repetitions. To start, the direction pin is set to off with a short gap time. The first nested for loop then causes 3,000 pulses in one direction, followed by a gap time and toggling the direction. The next nested for loop causes 3,000 pulses in the opposite direction, returning the system to its original state. The system then waits for three seconds before it repeats the cycle. The tidal volume for this cycle corresponds to approximately 300 milliliters. I've only talked about control, but the Raspberry Pi can also be used for feedback. With a few add-ons, the Raspberry Pi can be used for pressure and flow metering as well, allowing for a more complete ventilation system.